lost children who are in the far country, even when they're miles away and they may be just next door, but in their lifestyle, in their value system, they're miles away, you got to prophesy over them. And you got to say, God gave me those children. And the word of God was sown in their heart. And I will not let my children go. I will not cease to pray for them. I will continue to believe that God can bring them back. You got to speak to those children who are in a dry country and prophesy and command the enemies to let them go. That's not our heart burn within us. It's a difficult way sometimes, Deacon Mitchell. It's a hard press sometimes. It's a lonely journey sometimes. As I've shared with you before, you got to fall in love with the struggle and believe that God is energizing you and God is propelling you. And there is a brighter day up ahead. Oh, there is a brighter day up ahead because Jesus is waiting for us at the finish line. He's waiting for us there. And if we can hold on just a little while longer, the weeping man do it for the night, but the psalmist says joy comes in the morning. And somebody said, well, how long is the night, preacher? How long was the night? Not long. Not long. Because there is a brighter day up ahead, and Jesus shines brightly. And he's going to cause the glory of his shining sun to cause the darkness in your life to dispel. You hold on, children. And you keep speaking of those dry situations. And even though your heart may not feel like it's burning, you got to say, but there is still a little fire down in there. Yes, oh, yes. yes there is still a little fire that's burning down in there. And I'm going to keep talking to Jesus. Amen. Tell him all about my troubles. Yes, For I know he hears my humble cry. Yes, he answers by and by. Yes, Amen. Amen. I, I keep telling you, you got to talk to yourself. Yes, Some of you got to develop positive self-talk. Right. you got to talk to yourself. Right. you got to remind yourself who Jesus is and what he has accomplished, yeah. and what he's done, and he did it all for you. You gotta remind yourself that it didn't end in Calvary. All right. You gotta remind yourself that Calvary was just another pit stop. That's right. You gotta remind yourself that the victory belongs to you. Amen. For all of those who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. So why are you seeking to live in among the dead? And what are you talking about that's making you so sad? What's your self-talk that's pulling you down into the pit? What's your self-talk that's calling, causing you to doubt your own salvation, to doubt the integrity of the living God? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? And what things do you really understand about Jesus? Do you really understand the depth and the breadth and the height and the length of his love? Do you really understand that he went all the way? All the way for you. If you understand that, you can't quit. Yeah, no. yeah, no. You, you can't quit. Yeah, no. You can't throw in the towel, no matter how embarrassed you might be, how disgusted you might be, how discouraged you might be, you can't quit. Right. Because he has too much invested in you. Yeah, yeah. He has too much invested in you. It doesn't matter how many times you have blown it. And some of you here this morning, you're just, you're just wallowing down in guilt and shame because you think you have blown it to the extent that you can never recover anything from your life. You're wrong. Amen. God can always salvage something out of nothing. Amen. God can always rescue you out of the pit if you call on him. Amen. If you call on him, yes. and he'll do it. Yes, he He's done it for others. Yes, He's done it for, for me, Amen. and he'll do it for you. Amen. 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 I pray that God will, will take the old poke iron. You know, when I was back there in Fed County, before there was heat pumps and central air, before there were forced, air, forced gas furnaces, there were old pot belly stoves, Brother Ben. And if you had a good old warm morning, you really had something. And warm morning was like right in the middle of the floor. So it would distribute the heat all through the house. My grandmother, she kept old poker iron right there near the warm morning and right near the fireplace. And she would bank that fire at night. You had to put coal in him, Brother Ben. Wood burns too fast. To bank him with coal and smother him just so the embers down at the bottom will stay hot. So when you wake up in the morning, you don't have to start the fire all over again. She just take that old poker iron. She stirred up a little bit. 
and throw a little killing in there <laughs> and start a little fire burning. Are you with me? Yeah. Back up in the country, if we didn't have a gas stove, she cooked on coal. Yeah. So she'd start the, 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 the cooking stove at night, too, and she would bank it. And she would stroke it a little bit so she'd get those fried, those eggs and bacon, and those potatoes swimming in grease. Oh, help me, somebody. Oh, what, what a way to start a morning. But she couldn't make it without that poker iron. But every now and then, God had to take that poker iron, stoke that flame in your heart just a little bit. Get that fire stirred up, amen? Amen. Well, I'm not through, but I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. 